भगवदगीता टेन पॉइंट सेवेंटीन कथम विद्यामहम योगी ताम सदा परिचित केशु केशु च भावेशु चिंत्योसि भगवन मया अर्जुन इज नाउ आस्किंग specific request which he has started in the previous verse katham vidyam how can i know lord katham vidyam aham yogim oh lord uh, you are the yogi you are the lord of yoga aham yogi stvam sada parichintayan and to you oh lord how can i remember you always stvam sada parichintayan how can i always contemplate on you केशु केशु च भावेशु इन वॉट ऑलवेज केशु केशु इन वॉट ऑलवेज भावेशु इन दिस मटीरियल वर्ल्ड इन मटीरियल मैनिफेस्टेशन चिंत्यो सि भगवन मया हाउ कैन आई कंटेम्पलेट यू लॉर्ड हाउ कैन आई रिमेम्बर यू सो बेसिकली देर आर टू क्वेश्चन हियर दे आर रिलेटेड How can I remember you, Lord? Katham vidyam aham yogim stvam sada pari chinta yan. So first question is, how can I remember you constantly, O Lord? And second is, keshu keshu cha bhave shu chintyo si bhagavan maya. And in what all manifestations in this world, in what all material manifestations can I remember you? The two questions are related in that. we krishna has repeatedly stated that remembering him constantly is the way to progress spiritually is the way to spiritual perfection that is repeated message of the gita uh, clearly 8.5678 he has talked about this how those who remember him at the time of death they attain him and therefore one should always remember him tasmat sarveshu kaleshu ma manusmara yudhya cha therefore at all times remember me so now arjuna is asking how can i do that o lord how can i remember you constantly tom sada parichintayam and then a practical point comes up that uh, clearly krishna is not asking arjuna to renounce the world in fact at one level we could say the whole bhagavad gita is spoken because Arjuna was thinking about renouncing the battle, renouncing the world, and Krishna told him, "Don't renounce the world." So that being the case, if Krishna is not telling Arjuna to renounce the world, then then and Krishna is also telling Arjuna to remember him all constantly. Now that would mean that there must be some ways in which. Uh, arjuna can remember krishna in the world itself because there is a form of uh, withdrawn spirituality where one renounces the world and then meditates on something um, something transcendental something spiritual that is one way of meditation which is good but that is not the recommendation of the bhagavad gita so the recommendation or uh, to always remember krishna uh, which was which is consistent bhakti recommendation and also the recommendation to uh, to do his duty and to fight in this world to act in this world how can the two be combined that krishna is asking and that that arjuna is asking krishna and that's how his the second part of his question comes up कथम विद्याम योगी स्वाम सता परिचित द फर्स्ट पार्ट द एम्फोसिस ऑन सदा ऑलवेज ओल हाउ कैन आई रिमेम्बर यू एंड देन देन सेकेंड पार्ट द एम्फोसिस ऑन केशु केशु च भावेशु भावेशु इन वॉट ऑल मटीरियल मैनिफेस्टेशन कैन आई ओ लॉर्ड रिमेम्बर यू केशु केशु च भावेशु चिंत्योसी कैन आई कंटेम्पलेट ऑन यू लॉर्ड भगवन मया how can i remember you so the point that is being made here is that hmm, arjuna is asking for 
manifestations in this world and that's why in the previous verse also he used the word vibhuti twice vaktum arhasya sheshena divya yatma vibhutaya ya bhir vibhuti bhir lokan imam stom vyapatishthasi he says that vibhuti you know please tell me how your glory is manifested in this world especially how you pervade this world in your glorious manifestations your atma vibhuti they are your personal manifestations but they are your personal glories they they are manifestation of personal opulences atma vibhuti your own opulences they are uh, but what kind of opulences krishna can have many opulences uh, he has opulences in his uh, in his uh, spiritual world and he has a very wonderful relationship with various devotees in the spiritual world but he is asking arjuna is asking specifically aktumarhasya sheshena divya yatma vibhutaya ya bhir vibhuti bhir lokan especially those vibhutis imams tum vyapya tishthasi by which you pervade this world that is what i wish to know lord please describe these to me i long to know these and does the point that arjuna makes is the point that arjuna uh, which is introduced that he is making it more systematic in this verse that i want to remember you as you have told me but since i will be acting in this world and i will be interacting with the objects of this world constantly so please give me some guidelines about how i can remember you there remember you in this world and bhaveshu so here what will follow subsequently is a list that describes god's immanence you know god's transcendence refers to his existence beyond this world and god's immanence refers to his manifestation in this world and the 10th chapter of the bhagavad gita will describe god's immanence and the bhagavad gita reveals a vision of god who is present beyond this world and who is present even in this world so there are two different schools of thought one is pantheism and the other is deism and these two are in one sense we could say they are like two extremes uh, pantheism holds that god that everything is god that means it's more like pan means all but in this particular context it means that everything in nature is itself god everything in nature is itself god and there is no existence of god beyond nature so nature itself is god that means god's god is reduced to this world and this world is elevated to the level of being god that is pantheism and the other extreme is deism deism is where god is treated only as the creator of the world but not its controller that god is only that he created the world he is like the uh, he is the original cause the unmoved mover but after that he has nothing to do in this he, he has nothing to do with this world he exists beyond in his own mm, in his own state of eternal perfection un uh, unconnected with this world and whatever is happening here so these two pantheism and deism are two extremes where pantheism reduces god's presence to only this world and deism reduces god's presence to only beyond this world but the bhagavad gita describes a vision of god who is in this world but who is also beyond this world so this philosophy is in in western philosophical terms called as panentheism panentheism is the understanding that god exists in this world as is con- uh, conveyed by pan- the pan aspect but an entheism that means uh, he extends beyond this world also so god pervades nature and god exists beyond nature also that is panentheism and the vedic understanding is panentheism the vedic understanding is the understanding that 
God, He He pervades this world. Without Him, nothing in this world could exist. Yachapi sarva bhutanam bijam tadam arjuna dristivina yatsyan maya bhutam chara charam. In 10.39, towards the end of this section, Krishna will emphasize how He is the underlying, unifying, sustaining basis of this world. Without Him, nothing could exist. At the same time, He also exists beyond this world. And Krishna talks about that in many places when He talks about, say, His own abode, Taddhama Paramam Mama. That is my abode, and that is where. He resides. Na tadhase te suryo na shashanko na pavaka yagatva na nivartante tadham paramam mama. So he says that, O oh Lord, na tadhase yate. That board is not illuminated. Not illuminated by what? Suryo. It is not illuminated by the sun. Not illuminated by the moon. Not illuminated by any any of the objects that we use normally for illumination. And that is my board. So his abode, normally when we take our something as one's abode, that means that's the place where that person resides. So Krishna has his own self-existence beyond this world and that is where he eternally resides. So in that sense, um, Krishna exists in this world and Krishna exists beyond this world. So both pantheism and deism are are errors in that they reduce the jurisdiction of God. Whereas panentheism is uh, it, it encompasses the the universality and trans-universality of God's existence and jurisdiction. And thus he is understood to be the absolute truth. Now of course here uh, the question is, how does God manifest in this world? And that is, so in that sense, the immanence, the pan, the pan, it's not exactly pantheism, but the aspect of God's existence within nature, that is what will be the focus. So immanence and transcendence are not themselves, uh, they are aspects of God. Immanence is manifestation in nature, panthe, uh, transcendence is manifestation beyond nature. But they are aspects of God's existence, God's manifestation of God's existence. God's nature, but pantheism and deism are are ideologies, are schools which make claims about the scope of God's existence. So God is both immanent and transcendent, and uh, bhakti theology is neither pantheistic nor deistic; it is panentheistic. Thank you.